it speaks to the heart of people a certain message. And therefore, when we're preaching the message of the Word of God, we have to have music that will complement, will fit, and conform to that message. And we have to always ask ourselves, when we're hearing Christian music, what kind of message is that music presenting? And we also know that music must be spiritual and different from the world's music. And there are certain types of music that can never be used for the service of Christ for the simple fact that those styles of music always, always carry a certain kind of message that contradicts the message of Christ. And here's three styles. These are just examples. Sexy dance music. Now what does sexy dance music say? What is the language of that music? Well, it's to let yourself go, be loose, be, be sensual. That's what it always says. That's what it always says. Sexy dance music. Rock, jazz, blues, country, hip-hop, nightclub music. It's, it's all speaking that message. We have the quotes from rock and rollers that agreed with that, that admit that. And then there's angry, violent music. Oh, there's some angry, violent music today. Many kinds of rock and roll are that way. Some are just sexy dance music, and some is, are just raging, angry, violent type of music. Well, what is the message of that type of music? Well, it's anger, it's defiance, it's violence, it's rebellion against law and order. And that's always the message that that music will give. And you cannot possibly ever put that, those styles of music together with the message of Christ. And then there's relativistic type music, New Age, even jazz. One of the foremost experts in jazz, Martin Williams, said this, Jazz knows no absolutes. Well, brother, we do. That's what we're all about is absolutes. We have to have an absolute type music to fit that. So we're going to illustrate what we're talking about in a very simple way now with a the song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, it's number 361 in your hymn book. And we're just going to play that one little song, Christian song, in three different ways. Same song. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. Thank you. Now, did that make you want to dance? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. It didn't want to make you want to dance. Now, what were the words saying? Let's, let's think about that for a second. What were the words saying? The words were saying, prayer is sweet. The times of prayer with the Lord are sweet. and Calling me away from the world. So you don't want any kind of music that reminds you of the world there. That would be a conflict. But what did that music that went with that words do? It, it, it fit it perfectly. There's no conflict at all. In fact, you probably didn't think about the music. And the, the words are there and the message is there going into your heart and, and the music even helps that message go to your heart. Now that's good Christian music. It doesn't matter when it was written. It could have been written yesterday or a thousand years ago. That's good Christian music because the music fits the words and you have the complement of those two. Now we can take the same song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. We mentioned sexy dance music. And uh, I was a hippie before I was saved, but I didn't have a wind mini. But sexy dance music is another. We could take this same song.
I'm not going to go on. You get the message. It's a different song, isn't it? I don't know how we would have had Brother Vince try to sing that. <laughs> but we've got a different song there, but it's the same song. <laughs> I didn't want to do that for the sake of the video. Well, wait a minute. I'm not finished here. You say, that's weird. That's not nearly as weird. It's what we heard two years ago in Oklahoma City at a Christian rock concert at a Southern Baptist church. Not nearly as weird. Raging, violent music. Grinding, raging. And the this, this singer was screaming into the mic. Just screaming. You couldn't possibly understand what he was saying. Screaming into the mic. And there in front of the stage was the mosh pit, Southern Baptist Church, a mosh pit. And they were banging each other and slamming against each other and, and raging to the music because they weren't smiling. Oh, sweet hour of prayer. Because that music made them want to rage, and they raged. And so music is not neutral. In fact, not only is the music a message, but the whole context is a message. Now, here's an il illustration of this. Let's uh, pledge of allegiance in America. Now, here, if it were the Marines giving the pledge, and the Marines are there and pledge allegiance to the United States, well, that gives one kind of message. But what if we say the same words, and we got a clown giving those words? Same message? Completely different message. That would be somebody wanting to mock the United States of America or whatever country. But, but nothing changed. The words are the same. Yeah, everything changed. No, we're talking about something very powerful in the world, music. One of the most powerful influences in the world is music. And music is certainly not neutral. And the only ones today that are out there trying to pretend that music is neutral are those that are defending contemporary Christian music. The world's not saying that. The world knows that that's not true. The world has no agenda, and so they say, yeah, we're using this kind of music because it's sexy, man. And, and so these Christian rockers take it over there, and they, they, they can't admit that. And they have to make up this myth that all, all music's neutral. It doesn't really matter. And so that's the first warning that we give about contemporary worship music. Number two, contemporary worship music is largely a rock and roll feeling fest. I've done a lot of research into this type of music and what it's doing to churches and what it is. And contemporary worship music focuses on experience and feeling. Here is one of the big names in that music, Graham Kendrick in, 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 from England. And he says that the old way of preaching and singing, the old way of preaching and singing, began to give way to an expectation that God would visit us and we would experience His presence in a tangible sort of way. Tangible way. Feelings. Experiences. Integrity worship ministries. Big name in contemporary praise music, integrity worship music. And they say that they were formed to help Christian leaders experience God's presence. Experience His presence. Now, I saw an interesting example of what I'm trying to say uh, today. Earlier this year in Singapore... I visited the largest church in Singapore, City Harvest Church. It's huge. Coffee shop on the top level. The young people that were there before the service. The ATM style tithing machines, which we all need. The associate pastor.